Chapter 9 is about electrons in atoms, and it's also about the periodic table. It is not about electrons in the periodic table. The title is a little misleading. We start off by talking about um, an, an historical tragedy. Um, May 6, 1937, the Hindenburg. Um, this was a large, very large airship, a dirigible filled with hydrogen gas. Made it across the Atlantic, and then as it was landing, this happened. 36 of the 97 passengers died. It's actually pretty amazing that they didn't all die. Um, Hydrogen is a very, very flammable gas. I'm not sure who thought it was a really good idea to fill a blimp with hydrogen, but obviously they, uh, they don't do that anymore. Why is hydrogen so reactive? Why is hydrogen so flammable? What we're going to talk about in Chapter 9 helps us to understand why hydrogen has the properties that it has. We still have blimps. Um, I like how they Photoshop tro introductory chemistry on this blimp. I, I don't think there is a tro introductory chemistry blimp. But you've probably seen them, at least on TV, over, over football games and sporting events, right? The Goodyear blimp. They're now filled with helium gas instead of hydrogen. Hydrogen gas actually floats better. The reason that these balloons float is because hydrogen gas and helium gas are both less dense than air. And so these are not hot air balloons, but they are filled with he helium or hydrogen, which is less dense, and so they float regardless of the temperature. Helium is very inert. There is no way that this blimp can go up in flames. Helium does not burn. Helium does not form bonds with any other substance. There are no known compounds with helium. Helium is a little guy unto himself, incredibly inert. Why? Hydrogen and helium are, are next to each other in the periodic table, sort of. They're, you know, just across that big chasm in the middle, but they're next to each other. On this one, they're next to each other. So, you know, they're similar to two electrons, one electron, what's the big deal? Why is one so reactive and the other so non-reactive? That's what we're going to learn about in this chapter. We see patterns in the periodic table. We've talked about this a little bit before. We're going to talk about it more. Hydrogen is very reactive. Hydrogen is in group one. The other elements there, lithium and sodium, are also extremely reactive. Potassium, rubidium, cesium, they're all quite reactive. The inert inertness of helium is seen in the other members of its family, the noble gases. Neon, argon, etc., are also very inert. Models and theories explain these observations, and that's what we're going to talk about is models of the atom, what are the electrons doing, what's going on inside, why is, is the subject of this chapter. Two of the models we're going to look at, the Bohr model and the quantum mechanical model. They both propose explanations to these questions I've brought up. Um, especially the, uh, the periodic law, which to refresh your memory, when elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number, certain sets of properties recur periodically. These models help to explain what are the electrons doing. Now, quantum mechanics is um, the current um, model for the atom. It is difficult to understand. We're just going to kind of scratch the surface um, but I'm just going to kind of warn you right now, you are not going to understand the quantum mechanical model of the atom. I don't understand the quantum mechanical model of the atom. These are some quotations from very famous scientists. I'm pretty sure you've heard of Albert Einstein. They all worked on quantum mechanics, and this is what they had to say. Anyone who is not shocked by quantum mechanics has not understood it. Erwin Schrodinger, I don't like it, and I'm sorry I ever had anything to do with it. He was one of the main scientists working on this. They are trying to figure out why does nature behave the way it does? Why are these atoms and elements behaving the way they do? And that study led them to the discovery of quantum mechanics. They did not like what they found. It really bothered them. 
Albert Einstein says, God does not play dice with the universe. And that's what quantum mechanics seems to say is there's just no reason behind this. So it's going to be fun, huh? The quantum mechanical model, why talk about it at all if you're not going to understand it? Well, we'll understand enough, and it's very important because it's really the foundation of modern chemistry. It helps us to understand chemical bonding, and um, it has led to applications like semiconductor devices. That cell phone in your pocket would not be possible without quantum mechanics. Um, the design of new drugs that have saved countless lives. So it's a very important model.